Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, coming out of the third testament of the Bible, spiritual son of the second coming out of the Lord with biblical proof that our Messiah has returned. That's right, biblical proof, guys. We're not just going to make anything up. We're not just going to look at some pictures we see on the internet or Fox News or anywhere else like that. We're going to go to the scripture. Y'all talking about the third testament of the Bible. Talking about the second coming of the Lord. All right. You know how we do over here at Hermes Academy. Taking it verse by verse. Let's jump right into it. Look at verse one. He says, I present myself before humanity in a period when new revelations have transformed the life of man. Talking about new revelations. Verse one. I present myself before humanity in a period when new revelations have transformed the life of man. Nevertheless, I still manifest myself to humanity with the same humility that you have always known. This is talking about the Messiah, y'all. The second coming of the Messiah. He's saying that he's going to come in the same humble manner he did when he came over 2,000 years ago. Remember, a lot of people didn't recognize him. Those who even was expecting him thought he was coming with a whole bunch of pomp and grand jewel riding around on big horses big white horses with a whole bunch of glamour and and a big crown on his head and he didn't he came barefoot he came humble he came as a carpenter's son from a poor neighborhood and people didn't recognize him well he's gonna do the same thing this time guys he's already done the same thing this time guys and we're gonna prove it right here using the scripture verse 2 the divine the divine word of God has not come to incarnate on earth again nor has Christ come again to be born in a humble manger that that is no longer necessary because man no longer needs a material being to offer testimony of the power of God although I am manifesting myself through human spokesmen during this era man should not believe that my presence is in a material form it is not because the presence of God is spiritual, universal, and infinite. That's a lot to say there on that verse. So let's break it down a little bit here. He says, uh, the divine word of God has not come to incarnate on earth again. Talking about uh, the first coming. We all recognize that's who Jesus was. Yahushua HaMashiach, as we know him, his name to be correctly, was the, was the incarnation of the, God, of, of the word of God. It was the word made flesh. The word made flesh. The Bible, that book we call the Bible, not necessarily the 66 books, but all of the all of the father's word incarnated itself, was made flesh and actually walked around as a human being. That's not going to happen again is what he's saying there. And he says, no longer has Christ come again to be born in a humble manger. All right, now, we understand the word Christ to be a title. What does it mean? It means messenger. The word Christ and messenger is the same. There's somewhere in your New Testament that, that tells you when they change it. I can't remember the exact verse. But the word Christ, it means messenger. No longer do we have a messenger that's going to be born in a manger as a little child. That's not going to happen again. He says that is no longer necessary because man no longer needs a material being to offer, offer testimony of the power of God. Yeah. We don't need that anymore. We know about the power of God. We've already had the Messiah to come here in the flesh. We don't have to have that again. Even there are people out there who are waiting for him to come back in the flesh again. That ain't going to happen, guys. He says, although I'm manifesting myself through human spokesman. Now, we're going to learn about this human spokesman here. This is kind of like a prophet where he's speaking through man, where he uses, you know, some would say the third eye or the pineal gland or that spiritual connection between the father and us to speak through man during this era. Right. Man should not believe that my presence is in a material form. And that's the problem. We're looking for him in a material form, something we can see, something we can put our eyes on, something we can point to, run to our neighbor, grab our neighbor, drag him down there and say, look, there goes the Messiah. That ain't going to happen. It is not necessary, he's saying it's not necessary because the presence of God is spiritual, universal and infinite. Break that down a little bit. Spiritual. You're not going to see anything material. You're not going to see anything that you can put your eyes on. You have to look look for him in a spiritual nature. Why? Because he is universal and infinite. You can't put him in a body. You can't put him in a beam of light. You can't put him in a, a, a storm or anything like that. Mm -mm. You have to look for him in the infinite. He is all power. Omnipresent. Omniscient. And the other one, whatever that other one was. Oh, what is it? All powerful, all knowing, and at all places at the same time. 
Let's go on. Verse 3. He says, My arrival during this period would not have been necessary if humanity had been living a life of justice and virtue. For not all of the deeds that humanity has presented to me are righteous. Man walks on the wrong path and continues to sin and to lead a life that is unjust and evil. Thus, it was necessary that I come during this era to awaken man spiritually and remind him of the spiritual responsibilities that he has neglected. Man also needs to become aware of his father who has helped him to become all that he is and who will help him to become the true son of God. Man, these are some long verses. So let's break it down a little bit. All right, look right there where he says, my arrival during this period would not have been necessary if man had been living a life of justice and virtue. Talking about if we had have been doing what if we had have been doing what we are supposed to be doing, that's living with, with brotherly love, living uh, uh, with respect for the father and his laws. He would have never had to return again. We would have been all right. It wouldn't have been necessary for him to come in the first time. That's the reason why he had to come the first time was because man wasn't acting correctly. And that's the reason why he's going to have to come this time is because we still aren't acting correctly and we're in a time where we're actually going to need him. Now, this is the third testament of the scripture. And we can understand what he means by a period of time where we'll need him um, in other chapters where it talks about the tribulation, the end times and all of the things that we face. In fact, we did a class on um um, uh, the chapter that talks about uh, the, the the events that we are expecting to to take place here, talking about earthquakes, volcanoes, wars, stuff from stuff uh, coming in from out of space, diseases, famines, all kinds of stuff that humanity is currently going through. We're at the early stages of it, but this stuff is is so so bad, guys, that we need the Messiah, we need the Father, we need the Creator to come back here and be with us to help us to get through this stuff. He says, "Thus, it was necessary that I come during this era to awaken man spiritually, to remind him of the spiritual responsibilities he has neglected." Talking about the law, talking, you know, if if we had a picked up the Old Testament and the New Testament and read this stuff and done exactly what it said, we would not be shirking our spiritual responsibilities but we didn't you know how many people actually adhere to uh the the old mosaic laws you know most people tell us you 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 don't have to do those at all they're in error for doing so has humanity kind of tricked up right now and in order to, to get through this hump we have to have them the father to come back to help us through this time is what he's saying here Look right there he says man also needs to become aware of his father who has helped him to become all that he is and who will help him to be become the true son of God see this is why it's necessary for him to come guys it's, it's, it's to help us out we need his help right now in order to get through this hump let's look at verse 4 he says if I had attempted to communicate with man from spirit to spirit during this period man would not have listened to me because he is very materialistic therefore I choose to manifest myself through human spokesman to give you my teachings okay Break this down a little bit. Spirit to spirit communication, guys. That's what you do when you pray silently. If you say a silent prayer and you're you're, you're actually uh, attempting to, if not doing it correctly, you're at least t attempting to talk to him on a spirit level. Whereas if you say your prayer outwardly, that's a materialistic prayer. If somebody else can hear it, that's a materialistic prayer. And he's saying that, OK, he, he, he can communicate with us on a spirit to spirit level, but. If we if he had a done so during this period, we wouldn't have listened to him. You know, people talking about they're hearing voices in their head and, you know, other people talking about they're crazy and all of that kind of stuff. That's what would have went on. You go up there now and tell people that you hear the father talking to you in, in, in inside your mind and see what happened. You know, but, you know, that's actually what's going on. Spirit to spirit to communication. But that that wouldn't have been enough, guys, because man is so materialistic and caught up in stuff that we can see with our, with our eyes and touch with our hands that spirit to spirit communication won't work for us as, as, at this time. So what does he do? He came in the form of human spokesman, meaning prophets. He he put uh, people down who would speak for him, like uh, that guy Ro Rogers, who who he used as a vessel to communicate this third testament of the Bible. That was necessary, guys, is what he's saying there. Look at verse 5. He says, the reason why I descend to communicate to you, 
the, the verse 5 the reason why I descend to communicate with you is this as you cannot ascend to communicate with your Lord spirit to spirit I have had to descend another step that is from the spiritual and the divine where you may not yet come to take up your understanding which has its seat in the brain of man and translate my divine inspiration to human words and material sound so what he's saying is he had to come down here to us instead of us being able to reach uh, a level of spiritualization where we can then uh, communicate with him on a level that he would prefer. He had to descend back down here where we're at. He had to come back down to our level, so to speak. Now, see, we were not able to go up there. So he had to come down here. What he says to take up your understanding, which has its seat in the brains of man to translate my divine inspiration to human words and material form he had to put it in human words and material form for us to understand this he couldn't really be spirit to spirit he had to, had to put it in a, a way that we mere humans could understand or materialistic humans I should say can understand let's look at verse 6 he says man still needs to learn much more and it is the Lord who has come to bring him knowledge and wisdom although some may believe that my manifestation through the human spokesman was not praiseworthy truly I tell you that the teachings have revealed great spiritual wisdom and knowledge some would have preferred a manifestation with more splendor and more dignity but any form of grandeur which reflects vanity lacks divine light and spiritual evolution or spiritual elevation i should say this is talking about where we are as a humanity right he says man still needs to learn much yeah we have to prepare we're not prepared to hear him the reverend pastor deacon dr doug yet to this day is still telling us not to read our bible he is he might not come out and tell you directly put your bible down but he says stuff like uh the laws are written on our heart he says stuff like if you if you oh oh, oh you are in the error for following the the laws of of, of moses those are old antiquated laws that we shouldn't be paying attention to and that kind of thing he's essentially he's essentially telling us to put our bible but our bibles down and so it is because our bibles are put down that we do not have the spiritual preparation in order to communicate with him or see him or know who he is and so he comes to bring us knowledge and wisdom Look right there. He says, although some may believe that my manifestation to human spokesman was not praiseworthy. Hey, look, people will expect him to come in some big form the same way they did at first. You no, know, he came in a humble manner and people didn't recognize him. They wanted nothing to do with him because of his humility. That's the same way now, guys. He's promising you it's going to be the same way. In fact, that was the example of how it's going to be this time where people are expecting him to come, you know, in some big glamorous form, you know, where, you know, with grandeur and all of this other stuff that people are not going to recognize him and that's why we have this verse here to kind of help us to understand where we should be looking for him at what he's going to look like and that kind of thing well look right there he says truly i tell you that the teachings have revealed great spiritual wisdom and knowledge talking about the third testament of the bible the third testament of the bible great spiritual wisdom and knowledge this is spirit and truth guys this book unlocks so many secrets that we find that we that we didn't really understand from the old testament and the new testament and the apocryphal books it is it is awesome it is it is uh spirit and truth a bunch of spiritual wisdom and knowledge <laughs> look look right there he says some would have preferred a manifestation with more splendor and a more dignity but any form of grandeur which reflects vanity lacks divine light and spiritual evolution. See, he cannot come in a grand jurious form he cannot come like you would expect a, a king uh, a human king or somebody to come with a, a big entourage or a big parade or that kind of thing because that's what that's what we would believe that we were supposed to do i mean the reverend pastor deacon dr doug he's also he's already doing so with his big robes and his big gold crosses on and you know with, with his choir behind him and all of this stuff going on the messiah the father ain't coming that way he doesn't really want to be seen that way because he doesn't want us to act like that he don't want us all to be walking around in big glorious robes and stuff putting on all of this grandeur so why he wants us to be humble so he came humble and he's coming humble this time all right let's look at verse seven there 
says, I could have arrived amidst lightning and storms to make my power known. Man would easily have known that the Lord had arrived. However, this would have caused man to become more confused and fearful. Do you not believe that instead of feeling love toward a divine father, you would have feared his justice? Although God is all power, you must realize that he will not impose his will on humanity nor utilize his power to triumph over man. The only power God will use is divine love. Yeah, look, see, see, if he had came in this manner talking about lightning and storms and all of that, people would get in line for simple fear of him, fear that he was going to destroy him. But that no, he doesn't want that. He doesn't want to force us into loving him or force us into obedience. He wants us to choose him on our own and, you know, free will kind of thing. He wants us to make the decision to be with him. And so that's why he's coming in a more humble manner so that we could choose him for ourselves instead of being threatened with threatening with lightning or threatening with storms or, or that kind of thing <laughs> it's funny because that's, that's what a lot of people are doing now we're, we're still going about our daily day lives as if nothing is going on as if we're waiting for some huge uh storm or some huge event that's going to force us to get in line you know it's kind of like it, 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 i'm gonna keep doing what i'm doing until i see the father for myself and have to get in line kind of thing well these people who you're going to wait too late because he ain't coming in that form he's going to come quietly he's going to he, he he's, he's going to come in our spiritual nature and if you waiting to see something with your eyes you're going to miss him you're already some of you are already missing him that's the purpose of this class we're letting you know that he's already back and in these verses we're going to find how it is that we're supposed to be looking for him all right look down here he says the only power god would use is divine love meaning he ain't gonna force us to do nothing no he's going to show us love and make us understand what divine love is that way we will choose it on our own you know, who, who, who would want a wife? And we, we know that we are the bride, right? Who would want a wife that you had to force to be your wife? You want to hit her in the head like a caveman and drag her back to your house or whatever and, and make her be your wife. The, that movie, The Color Purple, comes to mind. Who wants a wife like that? No, you want your wife to love you for who you are. And that's what he's getting out of humanity by coming in this manner is that we're actually going to love him for who, for who he is instead of being forced to do so. Look at verse 8. It is the divine spirit who is... Is now speaking to the universe it has come to clarify all things that have confused man in the past this is the dawning of a new day for mankind because the divine spirit has come to eliminate the doubts and false fears of man as well as to help man acquire greater spiritual wisdom and understanding allowing his spirit to become free so that's his method of coming, guys, is to let us know who he really is. Look at that part right here. It says it has come to clarify. Talking about the divine spirit has come to clarify all things that has confused man in the past. How confused is man? You, you remember Justinian is the one who changed the Bible from resurrection to reincarnation, which got all kinds of people waiting for zombies to come up out of the ground and walk around on the earth. How confusing is that? You know, there's plenty of confusion in, in the scripture, guys, and I don't blame the scripture. You know, I look at those those people who wrote the, the scripture, Moses and Paul and uh daniel and ezekiel and isaiah and all of these guys they were mere humans they they had uh divine inspiration in their words but they still had to understand it in a way that they that that they knew look at paul in revelations talking about clouds and beasts and all of that kind of stuff he had he can only write down what he understood so we can't really blame them for the confusion but yet the confusion still exists Talking about this divine spirit, he says, has come to eliminate the doubts and false fears of man, as well as to help man acquire greater spiritual wisdom and understanding. Talking about the third testament of the Bible, guys, is helping us to understand spirit and truth. Or what does he say here? Greater spiritual wisdom and understanding, allowing his spirit to become free. And that's what we want to do, guys. We want to free our spirits. See, right now, our, our spirits are kind of trapped. It's, it's kind of in um, it, 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 it's not really free because of the materialism that's going on. You know, we can't really um, or oh, I'm going to say we can't. We don't really do those things that are necessary for the growth of our spirit because we're too caught up in the growth of our material. We're building. We want houses. We want cars. We want money. We want nice clothes um, and stuff like that. And we're not paying attention to those spiritual things. But that's what he comes when he when he comes. 
uh, in this form, um, he's bringing understanding and wisdom that will allow us to reach uh, our spiritual freedom. Let's look at verse 9. He says, I say to you that after you become familiar with the essence of my teachings and the justice of my laws, you will also become aware of how your previous beliefs and ideas prevented you from knowing the truth. Uh-oh. Is your, is your toes hurting? Some people about to get their toes smashed right here because look what he's saying. He's saying, I say to you that after you become familiar with the essence of my teachings, you got all of these people telling you that you're not supposed to read the Bible. You're not supposed to read the Old Testament. You're not supposed to follow the laws of Moses there. And he says, um, where are I lost some place? Uh, the teachings and the justice of my laws. See, a lot of people don't want to have nothing to do with his laws. You know, they want to get away from his laws. They want to act like these laws aren't pertinent to our life. Why? Because they want to break down. They want to eat what they want to eat. Go where they want to go. Do what they want to do. They don't want anybody tell us standing over them telling them what to do. You know, just like we were when we was in our parents' house. We wanted to get grown so we can live on our own. Well, now we're living on our own. But the thing is, this is the same way we're doing the father too. We've ran away from him and we don't want him coming and telling us to do nothing. But what does he say? I say to you that after you become familiar with the essence of my teaching and the justice of my laws, after you become familiar, you will also become aware of how your previous beliefs and ideas prevented you from knowing the truth, meaning knowing him, knowing where he was, because we were caught up in those beliefs, those those um Gentilish type beliefs, Paulinian type doctrine that we were that we don't really recognize who he is, where he is, and we have no knowledge of the truth. All right. Let's look at verse 10. No longer will the fear of punishment prevent you from analyzing and learning about different things. You will feel free to learn as much as you can. However, your conscience will tell you when it is not to your benefit to penetrate into knowledge that is not reserved for man. Talking about all of that 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 um that kind of spooky stuff. And I call it, you know, spooky. I, I really haven't gotten into, you know, all of that stuff yet. Talking about new age stuff. Um he may be talking about meditation. He may be talking about, uh, he, yeah, like I said, I, I don't really know a, a lot about that kind of stuff. Um, primarily because my conscience kept me out of it. You know, it kept me away from it. You know, I, I, I didn't really trust a lot of stuff. But he, what does he say here? He says, let your conscience be your guide. So if I want to go now and start to, to pick up this stuff and read it, all I have to do is bounce it up against my conscience. And if it, if it feels, you know, like something that, you know, I can, you know, find out about. About, like the pineal gland or the third eye that kind of thing then I can do so but I have to be aware of my conscience and not go into places that I shouldn't go some things some things are forbidden for man to know he's not supposed to know everything um uh, I ain't gonna call out anything because you know, like I said, I ain't familiarized myself with all of it. But we, we do know that there's some knowledge out there that we should not be uh, looking into. But you know, this is the time when you know we have a knowledge available to us. This is the information age now, where you can you know click on this computer and find out just about anything that you wanted to find out about. You know, and some of it just you know is not really supposed to be able to. We're not supposed to be able to find out, but we can, and so we have to. Use Use our conscience to let us know if we if if we are crossing lines, right? Let's look at verse eleven. My people, if it was announced that my arrival would be amidst wars, unleash elements in nature, epidemics and chaos on earth, it was not I who caused these events. I came during this period because I knew that humanity would need me during this time of great ordeals. Yeah, guys. You say, well, he, he say, well, you know, when was it when was it announced that his arrival will be a miss wars, unleashed elements of nature and epidemics? Matthew 24 and other place, Mark 13. He told us what was going to be taking place when he came back. And he, it promises to be just what he says here. Wars, unleashed elements in nature, which is talking about diseases and, and, fa and stuff like that. Epidemics. I think that's talking about diseases, too. The unleashed elements in nature. That uh, That's probably hurricane and earthquakes right uh, wars you know we, we a lot of wars going on and a lot of wars are about to get ready to get started too 
Third World War is about to get started. Uh, chaos on Earth. It was not I who caused these events. And, and this is the problem with the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug. He's claiming that all of these events that's going on is divine justice. As if the, the Father is putting all of these epidemics and wars and diseases on us to punish us. That is not the case. That is not the case at all. You know, he, what does it say here? I come during this period because I knew that humanity would need me during this time of great ordeals. See, you see. I've studied the events of the tribulation. I've studied it from the Old Testament um, uh, prophets with like Isaiah and Jeremiah who talked about such things and the other guys did too. I studied it from a New Testament perspective, uh, talking about revelations. I also looked into the apocryphal books and the hidden books and the lost books and, and you know, uh, um, the apocalypse of Elijah who talk about these events. I've studied this stuff a lot. And you know what? It's not survivable. There's no way humanity will survive all of the things that are coming upon this earth. Talking about boils and diseases and wars and meteors and nuclear bombs and earthquakes and it's not really it's catastrophic. It it if if it were not for the the father coming back during this time, this stuff would wipe humanity off the earth. And just like Noah's flood. Remember Noah's flood, how everything uh on the earth was destroyed, all life on earth was destroyed except those eight people that was on that ship. Well, if it were not for the father coming to help Noah at that point, humanity would have died. He would have had to create Adam all over again. And that's where we're at now. There's coming an event. He didn't cause the flood. He didn't cause the flood. You know, uh, like I said, you know, there's a little bit of I don't blame Moses for the way Moses wrote Genesis. Where it kind of implies that the father caused the flood. No, he didn't cause the flood. What he caused was those angels to build that ark and save humanity by putting Noah in there. Well, it's the same thing now, guys. He's building the ark. And I hope I'll put you one of them little uh, references, one of them little cards up there so you can look at a class that we did recently on um, uh, the arc of the, the, the uh, uh, tribulation or something like that. Where you know that now we have an arc for humanity to, to survive these great ordeals and that's what's going on. Alright, let's look at verse 12. He says, those events that were foretold to signal my arrival are now occurring. During the third era, I have come to the earth during a period of great suffering and turmoil to awaken and summon a huge new humanity with love. It is love that inspires man to practice justice, brotherhood and peace. Right. Talking about the, the stuff that's going on in the world. All you got to do is flip on your news and look at what's going on in the world. You know, wars. Uh, we got wars coming up. We got earthquakes. We got diseases. We got um, volcanoes. We got famines. We got all kinds of stuff that's going on um, in the world right now. All of these events were foretold. They've been they we they we were told that this day was coming. And he said, "It is during this time that I have come to the earth." Um, uh, doing this great suffering and turmoil to awaken and summon a new humanity with love, a new humanity with love. Now, see, this is one thing we got to understand. We're about to get a new humanity. Go back. Like I say, I keep referencing that that Noah's uh, that Noah's flood story, because that is similar to what's about to happen here. After Noah and the, got off of that boat, there was only eight people on the planet. You know, far as we know, you know, you can you can read a little between the lines where it talks about how, you know, some of the giants and stuff survived and and, and that kind of thing. But that was a new humanity that had started at that point, And that's what we expect now, a new humanity, a humanity that that is um, what um, not really caught up on materialistic stuff or selfishness or hate or, you know, those different things that, you know, we were. Um, almost required to have in order to be successful in this era in the next era that's not it's not going to be like that what is that a humanity with love it is love that inspires man to practice justice brotherhood and peace and that's what we're going to have in this new area this new humanity is going to be all about justice brotherhood and peace whereas now it's, it's about injustice it's about selfishness and it's about war there's coming a change guys and that's why he's here in order to help what does he say up there let me go back up there uh, new humanity to reach this level of of uh, spirituality. All right, now this is the last verse in this section here. He says the word of Christ germinated in his disciples, as well as the other people who followed him. His teachings and the essence of those teachings spread throughout the world. The teachings that I have brought today also were spread throughout the world. 
they will be welcomed by those who are prepared to feel and comprehend them. Yeah, welcomed by those who are prepared to feel and comprehend them. Well, the opposite is true too, guys. Those that are not prepared to feel him won't comprehend the things that are going on. That's why, you know, some of you guys who are, you know, working in the ministry feel rejection you feel like nobody's really you know hearing your message or paying attention to what you what what you got to say it is because of this preparation and not properly prepared and yeah i'll blame the reverend pastor deacon dr doug who is more and more uh, concerned with his grand jewel and his tithes money and his church and his congregation than he is in actually teaching anybody thing anything that has us confused we understand that you know most of the stuff that we read about in our in our scripture in our Bibles and other places in scripture was living parables where he was giving us an example so look right up there at the beginning of this verse he says the word of Christ germinated in his disciples he's talking about the apostles he's talking about those and how he gave his word to those those few individuals there and how it spread throughout the world and then he come here now he says the teachings that I have brought today also will spread throughout the world right so it, and and it's going to be the same way where it starts off with the few that believe and then it will spread from one to another and it, hopefully it won't take what it took for those guys back then where you know they was constantly being persecuted by the the who we know now as the catholic church constantine and that bunch but you know it, it is going to take time for it to spread throughout the world you, you know when we hear that the 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 word has to spread throughout all of the world before the second coming you know you got people out there you know all over the world now carrying bibles to you know uh remote areas trying to make sure that they understand the 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 um the words of paul and the words of moses there i would argue I believe that he's talking about the third testament of the Bible and what we learn here in spirit and truth. It is this doctrine here, spirit and truth, that's going to have to go throughout all of humanity. And once it is spread out throughout all of humanity, will he return? That's what I believe. But, you know, that's just what I believe. All right, let's get into the second section here, guys. It's talking about every eye shall see me. All right, verse 14. It says, Jesus said to his disciples, I shall be gone from you for only a time. I shall return. Then it was revealed to their master. Then it was revealed that their master will return in a cloud surrounded by angels and beaming rays of light toward the earth. Yeah. Now, talk about confusion. This was one of the things that confused man is that he told us that he was coming back on a cloud. How many people are looking up for him now, looking up at the cloud saying, you know, is that is that a is that a uh, Jesus looking figure up there on that cloud? You know, surrounded by angels. Yeah, I was there at one point, guys. I'm, I'm promise you I was. I, 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 I um, thought that a huge rock was going to fall out of the sky and land on Jerusalem and then all of a sudden we was going to see chariots of fire going across the sky I was going to see the Messiah up there followed by a whole bunch of angels that's what I thought was going to happen materialistically and I ain't the only one there's a lot of people thinking that guys and that ain't the case it's not material it's not going to be something you can see with your eyes and we have to get away from that or we're going to get messed up look at verse 15 he says here I am in the clouds, surrounded by angels, which are the spiritual beings that have come to manifest themselves as messengers of my divinity. As your good counselors, the rays of light are my word that speaks to you with new revelations that surpass wisdom and human understanding. Boom, y'all. Boom, y'all. The Messiah is back. Look at verse 15. He says, here I am. In the cloud, he's already back. He's in the cloud, but it ain't that. It ain't that cloud up there in the in in the sky, full of water molecules, with planes and stuff flying through it. It ain't that kind of cloud. It's a spiritual cloud, you know. It's a different kind of cloud altogether. Then he says, surrounded by our angels. Now he's talking about the 144. There's 144,000 individuals that he has set aside to help humanity survive uh, the tribulation and help help people to survive and make it through the tribulation so that humanity Humanity can live on those are the people that have surrounded him he's what did he say which are the spiritual beings that have come to manifest themselves among you as messengers of my divinity talking about the 144,000 if you're not aware of the 144,000 just click on YouTube and find it you know click on our channel because you, you, you can find a little you can find a lot more truth on our channel because you know we come from the scripture we ain't just making stuff up like you know some of those guys will be doing but 
There's some out there. You just have to you, you you just have to bounce what they're saying off of the scripture and make sure that it lines up. And you know anything material that they're talking about, don't believe it if they're talking about zombies and and people on clouds and you know all of this kind of stuff. No, it's regular old people. But look what he says there. He says spiritual beings have come to manifest themselves among you, meaning these are spiritual beings. The 144,000, they're spiritual beings. Who have come to manifest themselves uh, as messengers of the, my divinity, meaning they they have been reincarnated into these people who are going to be as your good counselors. And then it goes on to say the rays of light on my word that speaks to you of new revelations that surpass wisdom and human understanding. Guys, we got to get a good understanding of this verse so that we can understand that the Messiah is back. He's back. 100% proof that he's back. I don't know what I titled this video, but I should have entitled it 100% biblical proof that the Messiah is back. Look at verse 15. All right, let's go on to 16. Blessed are those who without sin have believed, for these are the ones who have felt my presence. All right, these are the people who didn't necessarily have to get caught up into materialistic stuff. You know, they could see him spiritually. That's why I said, blessed are those who without sin have believed, for these are the ones who have felt my presence. While there are other people having to see him in figurines and pictures of, of um, uh, what's that guy's name, George Gorgio, whatever, the Pope's son or whatever. Mm-mm. Those of us who can see him spiritually are the ones who are blessed. Look at 17. Man through his spirit shall find the truth. All shall feel my presence because I have told you since that time that every eye would see me when the proper time time comes. Yeah, every eye going to see him, right? And so, but, you know, there goes some of that confusion again where people are actually, you know, putting on their glasses. Maybe, maybe make sure I can see. I got to go find my glasses. No, you ain't got no glasses for the way you're going to be able to see him. It's, he, you have to look spiritually to find him. What does he say? Man through his spirit shall find the truth. Through his spirit. Meaning you got to put away materialism to find him. And then look at that part right. He says, all shall feel my presence because I have told you since that time that every eye shall see me. Well, you know, now we're talking about the tribulation. It is going to become a point where everybody on the planet can see him. I can see him now. You know, I know where he's at now. But and maybe you too, too, you know, out of, you know, hundreds of people who watch this video, you know, a few of you can or some of you can, too. But he's saying that everybody going to see him at one point. Even the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug, even the little, you know, person can't do nothing other than, you know, get the latest, you know, smartphone so they can walk around shining on it all day. You know, they, they're going to see him, too. But guess what? It's going to take a tribulation to get there, guys. It's going to take some real pain for them to understand that materialistic stuff is going to get stripped out of their hands. And as they sit there booty ball naked, you know, without any of their materialistic stuff, will they be able to see who he really is, guys? And he says everybody on our planet is going to see him. All right, let's go on. But he says right there when the proper time comes, you know, so they don't see him yet. Maybe it ain't the proper time for everyone. Well, it's not the proper time for everybody to see him. But we're, we're coming there. We're getting there. We're, we're getting close. Look at look at 18 for this time in which you live is precisely that announced by my word and my prophets of past times so that every man on earth would see me through the senses and potentials. Of his spirit. See, this is how we got to see him, right? We got to see him through the senses and potential of the spirit. We have to see him through the spirit. It, it, all of that, you know, what, what the Messiah did before has happened before, and it's not going to happen again. There's not going to be some man walking around, you know, talking about he's the Messiah. If it is, you need to run in the opposite direction. He is not. He is not. Maybe even be the Antichrist. You need to run. Let's look at 19. It is not necessary that they behold me limited and drawn in a human form. In order to say that they have seen me, but it is sufficient that their spirit fills me and their understanding can say with all truth that they have seen me. See, guys, this is where we have to look for him with the spirit. It is our spirit that will fill him in there. And then we will understand that we have seen him. You know, there, there is no other way to see him. He is infinite. How are you going to see something that's infinite? You know, that's like looking at the entire universe at one time. You can't do it, you know, but it is our spirit that's going to fill him from the inside. What did he say? Fills me and their understanding can say with all truth that they have seen me. It is through our understanding that we'll be able to see who he really is. And how do we get the understanding? Through the word, through the scripture, particularly, you know, through the third testament of the Bible. You have to have all three. 
I'm going to tell you now, you have to have all three. You have to have the Old Testament. You have to have the New Testament. But it's with the Third Testament that kind of unlocks those mysteries that we that we didn't really understand in, in the Old Testament and the New Testament. So it is our understanding that is going to allow us to understand that we have seen him. I right, look at verse 20. Love and faith, like intelligence, can look infinitely beyond the reach of your eyes. It is for this reason that I tell you that it will not be necessary to limit my presence in the human form or through some symbolic figure to get you to see me. Yeah, you know, we, we, he ain't got to do that. You know, we can we can use intelligence. We could use faith, you know, to see him, you know, and, and it, it is faith that we can see beyond uh, what our eyes are, are limited to. You know, I open up my eyes and, you know. It, it, it's, you know, and, and I'm trying to see something and I can't really see it. But if I have faith, I know it's there. And that's what he's saying is it's through faith uh, that we will be able to say it is because of love and faith that we can look beyond human forms and beyond what is a symbolic figures in order to see him. You know, we have to look through through our spirit. nature. And I keep repeating that, but I guess because the word keep repeating that he wants us to understand where he is. All right. Look at 21 in the second era. How many saw me and passed by my side, not knowing who I was? In contrast, how many who did not know when I was born as a man saw me in spirit, threw my light, and enjoyed my presence by means of their faith? All right, the second era, what he's talking about in the second era, we're, we're going into the third era now. The first era was the time we got the, the Old Testament. Every time we have a new era, and there's only three. You know, there's not going to be any more documents, you know, after that, no more testaments after this, you know, but the first ever came with Moses because humanity was going through such a change there. You know, before the people went into and this is a little bit of a side note before the people went into Egypt, nobody had on the planet really had to pay for food. Paying for food was not really something that anybody on the planet ever did. You know, it, the, the, the what happened was you had a big famine there in Egypt and. The, the, the creator, knowing that a famine was coming, sent Joseph over to Egypt with the mission to store up enough grain for all of humanity. And what did Joseph do? He sold it to the people. You know, he sold it to the people. And it was at that point the introduction of buying food took place. Before then, nobody on the planet bought food. But after that, humans have now become the only beings on the planet who now have to pay to eat. That was a big change, especially when they came out of Egypt and they were trying to get back into the ways of the Father, uh, getting away from all of that having to pay to eat kind of thing, that we had to have a new document. And that's where we got the Old Testament. That was the first era. Well, there was a similar, there were similar stuff, a similar change going on when the messiah came that was the second era and we got a we got the new testament right and here it is and, and we're getting ready going to the third era and we're about and we're getting and well we actually have the third testament of the bible bringing in the third era so what are you saying there in 21 he said when the messiah came to the earth and he walked around how many people walked by him and didn't know who he was like i said he was barefoot and homeless you know they were expecting some king to come whacking people who said anything you know negative about him and they didn't get that they found a humble man and they, they walked right by him not knowing who he was you know but that was only a few people there in jerusalem you know or in egypt or in you know the the, the places where the messiah lived but you know but what about the people who never had the chance to put their eyes on him you know and they saw him through faith you know they 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 believed in him you know um and if through with their spirit that, that kind of thing so and and oh that's in stark contrast when you know you have you know the the some who can who have no way of seeing him that believe in him while others put their eyeballs on him and walk right past him yeah all right look at 22 all of you open your eyes and justify your faith that you are children of light all of you may see me, but it is indispensable to have the will and faith to do so. Yeah, everybody can see him now, guys. Everybody, even the even the materialistic people that want nothing to do with the father because they're afraid that he's going to cost them their stuff can see him at this point. But what? They have to have the will and the faith to do so, meaning they have to want to. You have to want to. They don't want to. Not yet. They will when that stuff starts falling out the sky, though. Look, 23. I say to you that when this humanity is more against me with this irreverence, 
its deviation from justice and righteousness, I shall appear along their path full of splendor as I appeared before Saul and will make them listen to my voice. Talking about the tribulation. Yeah, guys, remember we're supposed to enter what's called the sea of apostasy. This is where people are going to throw away their Bibles and throw away their faith and throw away everything and say, you know what? I don't believe. I don't believe in all of that mess. That's irreverence. The deviation from justice and righteousness. Well, yeah, they throwing away. I don't want nothing to do with Moses. I don't want nothing to do with Leviticus and Deuteronomy. You know, I'm doing what I want to do. You know, when humanity gets so far away from that, you know, what is a more against me with its reverence and deviation from justice and righteousness. Then I shall appear along their path full of splendor. This is talking about the other guys, God. We ain't necessarily talking about you. you uh, all you got to do is focus inwardly on finding him and you will be able to. Well, the materialistic person ain't going to do that. But yet, it is when we get so bad in, 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 in this thing on earth, when we get so far away from his justice and his righteousness, that he's going to appear to everybody. All eyes will see him. And thing is, it's going to be, you know, in the middle of a huge tribulation is going to be kind of rough guys it's going to get rough all right look at 24 then you will behold me who have unknowingly been persecuting me will arise transforming and illuminated ready to follow me along the path of righteousness love and justice talking about your materialistic families guy talking about those that are around you that don't want nothing to do with the messiah now <laughs> they're coming a day when they're going to be transformed and illuminated why because of all of the trouble that is going on because be, be, because of the pain that they'll be feeling, then that they're actually going to call out for them. Right now, you know, they, they're feeling only the pleasure from the, their, their uh, materialistic stuff. And anything holy and righteous to them seems mundane or, or, or you know, even don't want to do it because it kind of gets in the way of their fun and stuff. Well, that fun is coming to an end and it's then when they'll be able to see him. They will. You know, you can look now. You ain't got to wait on that. You ain't got to wait on a nuclear bomb to come and blow up, you know, half the daggone world before you say, oh, I believe the father's real. No, all you got to do is look for him now. You know, and, and I don't know if this part, this section of the book covers this part, but let me help you out a little bit. Start doing charitable deeds. Start doing charitable deeds. That's just one way to get closest to the Father is do stuff for other people. Do stuff for other people. That's, that's one good way. And start to learn to pray materialist. I mean, not material. Start to pray spiritually. Learn to pray spiritually. You know, spirit to spirit to communication. And then you'll be able to, to see and feel him. And, that's, and I shouldn't say see. Because you're still not going to see anything, you know, except through your spirit. You'll be able to feel him in there. You'll be able to feel his presence and you'll be able to know. Let me let me tell you how a lot of people end up, you know, realizing where the father dwells. It's through some type of event that affects them. Car accidents, how, you know, something that puts them in danger where they fear for their life. And it's at that moment that they start to cry out for the for the father and say help me and then he comes in and miraculously saves them and you know then they know he exists then they know he's real then they know where he's at then you can't tell them nothing because the father then came and helped them well that's what's in store for all of humanity all of humanity has that big car accident waiting on them when where we're at we're at 25 he says i say to them hold back your footsteps old travelers and drink from this fountain of crystalline waters. Rest from the harsh journey in which I have tested you. Confide your trouble to me and allow my gaze to penetrate deeply into your spirit. Because I want to fill you with grace and to comfort you. Talking about the tribulation, guys. This is this is kind of a post-tribulation message here. That's why I don't really, you know, make a whole lot of sense. It's like, oh, wait. But no, it is after the tribulation that this right here is going to take that this is that going to happen. That's when we're going to get to drink from the fountain of crystalline waters. The water is so mud, muddy and dirty now with the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug. Half the people don't even want to drink any water at all. You know, but it's after the tribulation that the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug going to be gone. And then all we're going to have is is the crystalline waters of the Father. That's, that's one of the things that will occur during the tribulation is all evilness and wickedness will be wiped off of the earth including all of these heresies and false doctrines of the doctrines of the of the modern church will be gone all right all right let's look at 26 my love shall stir your most sensitive fibers but in harmony with your conscience which makes you hear my divine concert and many shall behold me in the sweet figure of jesus 
See, now this is one of the big things we have coming. It's taking place, guys. One of the main things that will happen during the tribulation or right there after the tribulation ends is the spiritual valley will dwell on earth, you know, it, meaning that all things spiritual will become closer to where we at and we're going to, you know, understand things more spiritually where now everything is materialistic well one of the things that's going to happen is our conscience our conscience is going to become stronger and our life is going to become more dominant in our life we're going to be able to feel our conscience more than we do now right now you can ignore your conscience you can do what you you know you can pretty much do what you want all you have to do is do it quickly enough and your conscience never has a chance to weigh in on it or you know if it does just turn on the television or you know go down to the local bar and drink it off and you don't have to worry about it well that's not always going to be possible right the this consciousness is going to grow up on us a little bit, so to speak, and it's going to become dominant in our life, and it's going to it's going to be a little bit painful. That's where that fire comes from. When you hear about the the fires of hell, those are the fires that he's talking about. That that fire that that consciousness is going to be when it starts to weigh in on us. And it is that conscious that is going to make us hear his divine concert. And many shall behold him in the sweet figure of Jesus. Yes, yeah, through that conscious that you're going to start to understand who and where he is and what he really expects of us. And as people start to to feel their conscience, they'll start to get in line and start to you know want to do right. I right, look at 27. He says, I must warn you that the figure of Jesus is not the perfect form in which you shall behold me. If I told you in the past, every eye shall see me, I made you understand that all of you would know the truth. Yet I tell you that I shall limit myself according to the evolution of each spirit. But as you ascend in the ladder of perfection, you will behold me in all of my splendor. All right. Yeah. So every eye shall see him. But what did it say? I made you to understand that all of you will know the truth. That's how we're going to see him when we know the truth. You know, yet I must tell you that I shall limit myself according to the evolution of each spirit. Now, that's some deep stuff there, guys, because what he's saying is, is that it, it, the level of which you will be able to see him. Sure, you may know he's there, know what he is, but will you be able to take advantage for for power of of what you're seeing there? Meaning, will you be able to heal people? Will you be able to get all of your prayers answered? Will you be able to? to uh uh talk through telepathy or speak to animals and all of this stuff that's promised in 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 the post tribulation era well it's according to the evolution of each spirit meaning how well have you prepared have you ha are you doing the things according to what the scriptures say so that you can become clean enough so that you can now take advantage of this stuff is what he's saying but he says as you ascend in the ladder of perfection you will behold all of my splendor meaning as you become closer to what we are supposed to be according to what the scriptures say then you will be able to see him that's why the reverend pastor deacon dr doug can't see him is because he ain't reading his bible he ain't paying attention to what's in there you know he's so busy concentrating on making sure he's got his tithes money and his big robe that he's not really uh, uh preparing himself like he should be in order to see where the father is and then but he's going to be limited until he actually starts to you know prepare himself that he's not going to be able to see him look at 28 for now, do not try to imagine me in any form whatsoever. Meditate. If your spirit being limited is essence, is light, what form may the universal spirit of your Lord have, who has no beginning and no end? Leave what is unfathomable in the intimacy of my arcane, right? And, you know, the arcane is talking about uh, mystery, what does it say, mysterious, secret, esoteric. So, if he, 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 so right there, he said, don't try to see him in any form, meaning don't look outside of yourself to see the Father, but no, meditate. You know, that's one of the things we have to learn to do is, is spend time with him in a form of meditation. And that's when we're going to sense his presence. That's when we're going to find his presence. He's already returned, guys, but he's on the inside of us. He's on the inside of our brother. He he's always he's always been there. But we have to have the necessary preparation to get there to see him. The, the thing about nowadays, guys, is this tribulation is coming and we're going to have to move a little faster. We're going to have to set a little bit of fire under our feet so we can get going in this thing. Or else we're gonna die because of the because of the, the events of the tribulation are so severe that we're not gonna be able to survive. You know what's going on there, and stop trying to see them with the eyes. How are you gonna be able to see something that has no beginning or no end? 
No beginning, no end. How are you going? Which, which direction are you going to look? Everywhere? Well, that's that's a good start. But, you know, you are looking everywhere and you're not going to be able to pull him out in any form that you can now point and say there he is or point in that direction and say there he is. No, he's he's infinite, you know. So he says, leave what is unfathomable in the intimacy of my arcane. I mean, don't try to understand all of that stuff. You know, don't try to understand everything, where he dwells at and all of that kind of stuff. Twelfth dimension. And all, you know, that may be a little bit higher than, than what your, you know, your, your, your human mind can withstand or whatever. So, you know, but we, but we can't meditate and spend time with him. You know? Let's look at 29. During the second era, I revealed to you that I would come again among mankind and that my spiritual world of light would descend with me. However, humanity has not understood nor correctly interpreted the meaning of my word. Right. We he, he told us that he was going to what is I revealed to you that I will come again among mankind. So we thought he was going to be a man. You know, we thought he was going to be walking around here, you know, and, you know, that's why they're over there building a third temple in Jerusalem now, because they like, you know what? I want to own the real estate when he comes down here. You know, I'm going I'm to I'm be the one. He's going to live in my building that I built with my hands or whatever. So they're actually building a throne for him over there. You know, now that's an error. And that my spiritual world of light would descend well, with me. Yeah. So when we're we're expecting zombies on clouds and that kind of thing to go on, no, that's not what's going on at all. He says, however, humanity is not understood nor correctly interpreted the meaning of my word. Yeah, confusion. We talked about earlier how we are confused. Humanity is confused on what we're expecting him to come. But we're finding right here in this chapter, guys, we're finding in this chapter what how it is that he's supposed to come. Spirit and truth. We just gotta look for him on the inside. But let's look at verse 30. This is why each religion awaits for me amidst this church and people expect to perceive me in their physical eyes yeah they expect to see him in their physical eyes guys it ain't that way and and it, I, I went to a guy across the street you know, I'm up here visiting my dad and he has this big white church across the road and I mean it's literally right across the road and I happened to glance over there a few minutes ago and and um, the preacher was out there painting on the church sign I knew he was the preacher I knew he was the pastor because he was painting on the church sign so I went over and started talking to him and I I told him that the Messiah every turn, he started looking around. Man, close your eyes. You ain't gonna find him out there, you know. Yo, I don't, I don't know that the that the Messiah is returned. Well, it's because you don't know where to look for him, you know. That's gone. Those who await me in that manner. Uh oh. Let's go back to thirty. He says, "This is why each religion awaits for me amidst its church." And people expect to perceive me with their physical eyes. Those who await me in that manner are those ones who in the past said that Jesus was not the true Messiah. Whoa, this is deep, guys. It hit me like a rock when I first heard it. And what he's saying here is those people who expect to see him with their with their with their physical eyes are those who said the, that the Messiah, that Jesus was not the true Messiah. Then this should bring to mind the Muslims. This should bring to mind the Muslims. <laughs> when you go, you, you're on YouTube already. Go look around. The, the Messiah has returned. What you're going to find is, a, you know, other than some freaky light bulb falling down on a dome of a rock, you're going to find a bunch of Muslims telling you the Messiah is this guy or the Messiah is that guy or the Messiah is this guy over here. It's always some dude. They're not really going to see him in, 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 you know, in the spirit. They're expecting to see a man in the flesh. And why? Look right here. It's a curse. It's a curse that was up on them. They cursed themselves to now they're not going to be able to see him in the spirit. And why? Those who await me in that manner are those ones who in the past said that Jesus was not the true Messiah. So they said at some point, and we're talking about past lives, so they may not remember doing it in this lifetime, but we got to understand the reincarnation of man. How we've been here in several times, and it is, it, and it is, it, it was because of their, they openly said that Jesus was not the Messiah, that now they expect to see him with their eyes. They're not going to be able to see him where he really is. All right, <clears throat> so we had a bit of a little hiccup there, and it's the next day, and so this may sound a little bit disjointed, but we're going to go on looking at verse 31. It says, my disciples, now I say to you, 
the moment will come when you will perceive me in all of my splendor. Yeah, see, we can see him now. But do we see him in all of his splendor? No, we don't see his. We don't see him in all of his splendor. Remember, the whole thing says every eye shall see. We don't see him in his full splendor, but we will at one point. He says, at that time, the earth and its inhabitants will have become purified, and the grace and virtue of the spirit will have been restored. Suffering will have disappeared, and there will only be joy. It will be an infinite day, a day that will never end. Do you not wish to perceive those miracles? Do you not want your children to communicate with my spirit to be free of sin and to form a world of peace? So he's given us a bit of a timeline here. Now humanity, the ones who are left here on the planet, the new humanity will be able to see him in all of his splendor. But when? He's saying, he says right there, at that time, the earth and its inhabitants will have become purified, will have become purified, meaning after the tribulation. After the tribulation is when we'll be able to see him in all of his splendor. We can see him now, you know, we can see kind of parts of him, I guess. We can, we can, you know, kind of understand where he's at. We can take advantage of, of his, his presence or whatever. But it is after the tribulation that we're going to see him in all of his splendor and all of his glory and grandeur, you know. That's going to be the big day when he takes the throne and becomes the king of the planet and right there he says and the grace and virtue of the spirit will have been restored yeah that's that's what the tribulation one of the things the tribulation is going to do for us guys virtue of the spirit will be restored suffering will have disappeared and there will only be joy that's talking about the millennial age you know that part of or oh, that 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 uh, period of time for 1,000 years after the tribulation where the father comes back and we get to get all of the blessings that the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug has been promising us all of these time. He's been telling us, you know, stuff like you're supposed to get all of our prayers answered, all of our sins will be forgiven, all of our the laws will be written on our heart. All of that stuff is written in the Bible, guys. The problem is it's not he, he's not using his dispensational truth and he's applying those futuristic promises promises to today he's uh, he's telling us today we ain't got the you know m uh, mind the laws and they'll be written on our heart and he's getting us in trouble because we're doing that we're living like this is the the, uh, the millennial age and it's not we're still living under uh, the kingship of uh, the presidents and the, and the, um, uh, the the popes and you know the UN and the rest of the people who the bankers and stuff that are running this world says so do you not wish to perceive those miracles yeah it's a lot of miracles that are being promised if we are to survive the tribulation if we make it to the other side of the tribulation there's a lot of great stuff that we're supposed to see but in order to to make it across the tribulation we have to we have to understand the ark we just did a class recently we did a couple where well, we reposted a couple classes on the ark and check those out what it takes to survive the tribulation so we can see that time that he's talking about there let's look at verse 32 he says if mankind would have known to analyze the prophecies of the first and second eras they would not be confused today about their fulfillment this is what happened during the second era when the messiah was born among men the same thing that is happening today when i have come in the spirit yeah meaning people did not recognize him they they didn't know what to look for they they expected the messiah to come one way and because he didn't come according to the way the Pharisees and the Sadducees thought he was supposed to come they rejected him they didn't see him as as who he was and he said that's the same way it is today you have a lot of people who are waiting to see him with their eyes and when they don't see something coming out of the sky or they don't see you know um, some big glorious thing they're going to reject him that is what's happening happening today Hopefully not for you guys. Hopefully after this class, you you won't be looking for no grand jewel or no you know spaceships or no light orbs falling from the sky or you know storms or any kind of thing that the, that the father would be in. You're looking for him in the spirit. All right, let's look down here at 33. He says the meaning of my teaching is the same in the two eras. It prepares you to make this existence a pleasant dwelling, although temporary. Where men will regard and treat each other as brethren and warmth of true brotherhood pouring from one another. Yeah. 
Jumping back up there to uh, 32, he said that uh, he said if mankind would have known to analyze the prophecies of the first and second eras, they wouldn't have been, would not have been confused today. The, the the problem was is that we look at those prophecies prophecies materialistically. We we saw those prophecies, those you know, and we thought that they were supposed to happen. Um, 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 we're supposed to see a material manifestation of those prophecies, and it is because of um, that that we are actually looking in the wrong places for him. Like you read Revelations, you are supposed to take it literally, but you also are supposed to take it spiritually and not really be looking for stuff that you can you, you can see. All right, and because of that, that we made errors. Now, 33 says that those teachings that were taught by the old guys are are similar now. So you got to understand what they mean by a living parable. That those were an example of what is to take place in the future, except that was a living parable. Meaning we're going to have flood waters the same way you had Noah's flood, except it's not going to be H2O. It's going to be hate. It's going to be greed. It's going to be selfishness. It's going to be rebellion. Those are going to be the floods of that's, that's going to wipe you know a lot of people off of the planet during the tribulation but he's telling you right here that you know the the teachings of the new uh of the two eras were supposed to uh make this this habitation here on earth pleasurable I meaning supposed to teach us how to get along with each other remember a lot of the laws you know that uh, that the, the mosaic laws they teach us how to to how to get along with each other look at the ten commandments it tells you what don't be stealing your neighbor's stuff don't be messing with his wife don't be covered in those things that he have don't be lying to him you know what i'm saying it, a lot of the rules teach us how to get along with each other on the planet and that's what he's saying there brethren with a warmth of true brotherhood pouring from one another you know and, and you know let's look at 34 also, prepare the spirit to penetrate into those worlds or mansions that the father has reserved for his children after this existence. My wish is that you do not feel like strangers when you go there, but rather that your spirituality and intuition will allow you to regard everything that you find as if you have previously been there. Much of the truth will be in it if you know how to remain in contact with the spiritual from here by means of the prayer. Guys, this is a deep book, guys. Talking about a third testament of the Bible, spirit and truth. It unlocks all kinds of secrets, including where we go after we die. And that's what he's talking about here. When we get ready to go to these dwelling places, these higher dwelling places, these spiritual mansions that we have been promised that we that is not alien to us. But and the only way we're going to be able to do that is if we have prepared spiritually. And, you know, I would argue what he's talking about are the mosaic laws the statutes the judgments the precepts the, the, you know what Mo, look how most people are, and have never heard of psalms 1 everybody's heard of psalms 23 but who's ever heard of psalms 1 go go look take a look at psalms 1 i think i already got it pulled up here hold on let me look the very first psalm in the bible says blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the godly nor standeth in the way of the sinners nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful then it says but his delight is in the law of the lord and in his law does he meditate day and night talking about the law you know the, the law is extremely important guys and i will argue that it is necessary for our spiritual evolution which is in contrary to what the reverend pastor deacon dr doug teaches which he learned down in his seminary that you you know, everybody's a Gentile. We're supposed to avoid the law as if it was the plague. Somehow following and being obedient to the Father's word was somehow going to curse us and make us detached from him. Which, you know, kind of weird, you know, for him to even think like that. But, you know, that's what they do. All right, so let's jump back over here. Oh. Because verse 34 says we have to prepare the spirit to penetrate into those worlds or mansions. You have to be prepared. Just to give a little short part of my testimony, guys. Back back in 2014 was when I really started um, doing the Feast of Tabernacles. Actually sleeping in a tent outside for seven days. But guess what? In 2006, in 2015, I didn't. In 2015, I, I uh, the Jubilee year after I had actually received my land and got my land back according to the way the 
scripture was supposed to but what was supposed to work i'm sitting there looking at the scripture saying hey i ain't got no fruit i just moved here i ain't got no fruit of the land i ain't got no i ain't got this so i took the way of uh, i took the other path there's actually two paths if you read um leviticus 23 and talking about tabernacles when you read really, really closely it seems like there are two paths that you can take well, having slept in a tent the, the previous year, I actually um, 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 did not sleep in the tent in 2015. And it was like all of the blessings that I had received in 2014 started going away in 2015. And things got horrible. It was like a complete reverse. It's like I stepped up into an area of blessings in 2014, keeping the tabernacles. And when I didn't do it in 2015, I fell off the wagon. And that roll was a hard bumpy scratched myself up it was a mess but then i came back in 2016 and kept the feast and guess what it turned around for me and i started and started um evolving spiritually and you know actually you know getting on the kind of the path that you see me on now where you know the bunch of spirit and truth kind of thing i believe it was because of those feasts i believe it is necessary for us to keep those feasts and keep the other commandments statues um and 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 all of the rules of the bible in order to what did he say prepare the spirit to penetrate into those other worlds look right there he says much of the truth will be in it if you know how to remain in contact with the spiritual from here by means of prayer I'm talking about spirit to spirit communication guys all right looks 35 he says i am the traveler who is calling at the door of your heart i call and you do not know who it is you open and you do not recognize me like the traveler who comes to a town where no one knows him or like the foreigner who comes to a strange land it is not understood in his own language in this way I present myself to you when will you feel my presence O humanity when will you recognize me as Joseph was recognized in those days by his brethren in Egypt yeah, we've always heard that he stand at the door and knock. And, you know, some of us going into this video, he's he's been standing at your door and knocking. And what does he say there? He, he says he's calling at the door of your heart. I call and you do not know who it is. You meaning so. So he's standing at your door and knocking. Some of you, maybe even most of you, the father is standing at your door and knocking, but you don't recognize him. You hear people saying, it's not somebody told me this or, or something said this or something told me to do this. That something very well could be the father and you just don't recognize who it is. He said, you open and do not recognize me. And he says it is not in that manner that he's coming here. And it is because of the spiritual preparation. I would argue it's because we're not fully prepared spiritually to to recognize who he is. You know, so we got to, you know, put away the false doctrines of the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug and we have to get back into what the Bible actually says that all of them people all of them people I promise you I'll pride I bet this computer I'm working on right now that all of those people who are sitting there telling you that, you know, the uh, mosaic laws are antiquated and that we're not supposed to be following over. What, what did somebody tell me today? Why? Oh, why are you? Uh, why would you return to the curse of the law and all of this kind of stuff? You know, those same people. They ain't never read the Bible. I promise you they ain't never read the Bible because it took me five minutes. I, when I read the Bible 20 some years ago for the very first time, it, it didn't take much to realize, you know, he ain't he's actually talking to us. He's not talking to some people way long time ago that don't exist today. He's talking to us today. And, you know, he, he is. He says, when will you feel my presence? Oh, humanity. It, we got to start doing charitable deeds, guys. This is one way to get closer to him, like I mentioned earlier, and to to do charitable deeds, do stuff for widows, do stuff for the poor, do stuff for um, uh, uh, single parents and fatherless children. Actually, help these people out. You know, do something for them. And it always don't take money. The scripture tells us, in, at least in in the Third Testament, it tells us that money is one of the least things you can do for people. And it is. Think about how easy it is to whip out your old credit card and do something for somebody it don't take no effort at all some of you don't even pay that money back you know it, 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 
actually physically doing something will actually take more effort. So actually, you know, if you don't have money, don't worry about it. Go find something to do. You know, jump in your car, ride around, look for, you know, somebody broke down on the side of the road. Or or maybe find a little old lady struggling to get her groceries in the car. Or somebody with a, 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 a you know, a, a child that needs help or something like that. You know, find somebody and do some charitable deeds. Then learn to pray spirit to spirit. Not really an open mouth prayer, but a closed mouth prayer using proper tech, proper prayer techniques like we learned back there in Matthew. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, blah, blah, blah. Use those type of and practice this in his name. Pray in his name and you will start to see his presence. I promise you, you will. The question is, will you recognize it? What does he say right there? When will you recognize me as Joseph was recognized in those days by his brothers in Egypt? Yeah, so we, we, we he's there. We can feel him. We just don't know what we're looking for. All right. So hopefully you got something out of this. I'm sorry it wasn't one of the better classes. Subscribe to the channel. Um, chances are we're going to put this one up again. Try to do a little bit better in the future. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment. You know, leave a leave a leave a comment on what you think here. Um, hit the like button. Um, what else can you do? Oh, share it. Share this on your channel. <laughs> go go take this and post it on your your Facebook account or something like that. You know, even if you say, hey, look at this weird guy saying the, the Messiah has returned. Ha ha ha. Laugh out loud. Post it on up down there. It'll do our channel a lot of good and, and do yourself some good too by helping spread the word. All right, guys, I'm gonna get out of here. My peace be with you. Hermes Academy. Power, patience, continence, and faith. We teach virtues.